Hey there, medical coders. Ever felt like you couldn't apply for a job because of the dreaded experience requirement? Well, buckle up because I'm about to shatter that myth for you. I've got the inside scoop from hiring managers. Some of them not only welcome, but actively reserve spots for entry-level medical coders with little to no experience. The worst they can say is no, right? Today, we're diving headfirst into the application game with nine roles. Most are full-time gigs, but there's a wild card in the mix. They all want a year of medical coding experience, but guess what? We're throwing that rule out the window. Whether it's remote or not, we're applying for all of them because they don't always specify if it's remote or hybrid. Without further ado, let's jump into the video and kickstart your medical coding career. This company is TSAOG Orthopedics and Spine. The title is a medical coding specialist uncertified. Did y'all hear that? Pay attention, please. Attention. It says uncertified. You do not have to be a certified medical coder to work in this position. Now, the salary is $18 an hour. It is an entry-level position in San Antonio, Texas. Let's scroll down and take a look at the summary of the position. They state that the right candidate will be able to provide an exceptional patient care experience that promotes healing and recovery and having attention to detail mindset while being caring and compassionate. You'll assign appropriate diagnosis, procedure, modifier, and other codes such as quality codes based on clinical documentation, utilizing correct coding conventions, and established policies and procedures for assigned specialty in addition to multiple specialties. You will research and resolve client coding and documentation questions utilizing appropriate resources. Resolve pre-billing coding related edits for surgery cases or office visits as assigned. You must have a high school diploma or equivalent and of course a minimum of one year of coding experience. And as you can see, nowhere in the listing do it states that you need a certain certification as a medical coder to work in this role. The next company is HCA Healthcare for a coder position and the position is work from home. You will review and code designated office hospital notes for one or multiple practices, resolve complex coding scenarios, provide feedback and documentation advice to physician, non-physician, practitioner, and practice management. Works with AR to resolve coding-related denials. It shows that you will be dealing with CPT, Hicks Picks Level 2, and ICD code sets. Receives and reviews charged documents from the clinic and or hospital, ensure charge information provided is correct and accurate, charge entry into billing system, available to assist and direct the practice or other appropriate staff regarding documentation, billing coding, and reimbursement issues. You must have at least one of these certifications. As you can see, a CVC here, a CPCH, CCSP, CCS. But like I stated earlier, if you are a CPCA, I will still apply. The worst that they can say is no. The next position is with HCA Healthcare as well, but it's for a coder two role. And it's also work from home. And this here is important. This position will be work from home following approximately one month of training at our central business office located in Austin, Texas. Must be located in Texas to be considered. It states here, work from home offers a total rewards package that supports the health, life, career, and retirement of our colleagues. And you can read over all of this on your own time. As a medical coder, you will contribute to the company's mission, vision, by reviewing medical record documentation. You will apply appropriate coding based upon the diagnosis and procedure guidelines. For code sections that adhere to HCA, ASD coding compliance policies and procedures. In this role, you will code outpatient surgery centers, records in a timely manner, including the assignment of ICD-10, procedure categories, and hicks picks cpt procedure codes. You will code an average of 80 to 150 charts per day. You are responsible for resolving codes and diagnosis with conflicting or unclear information by utilizing the query tool to gather additional information. As for the qualifications, they're looking for you to be a CPC or CCS or an RHIT or an RHIA. The next company is Cook Children's. The position is a hem coder analyst too. 
It says that you require advanced knowledge of and skill in applying ICD and current procedural terminology, CPT code sets, and associated Medicare slash Medicaid rules and guidelines. You are expected to adhere to a 95% accuracy for all coding assignments. You will communicate with physicians and other providers regarding documentation requirements and collaborates with clinical documentation specialists on patient cases regarding documentation needs and requirements and coding assignment accuracy. They want the candidate to have an RHIA, an RHIT, or a CCS. This here is important. Prior to hire, you will have to take a coding assessment and you must score at least a 90%. The next position is also with Cook Children's as a HIM coder analyst too, but this is the wild card that I was telling you all about. It is part-time. You must work at least 20 hours a week. You will be dealing with ICD-10 and CPT coding. You will primarily code complex ambulatory surgery and observation visit medical records. You will identify and abstract specified information from the patient medical record and enter data into the electronic health record system for billing and use in all types of CCHCS reporting. You must adhere to 95% accuracy and you will also be communicating with physicians and other providers regarding documentation requirements. It also states that they want you to have an RHIA, RHIT, or a CCS. You will also have to take a pre-medical coding assessment and score at least a 90% prior to hire. This one is also for Cook Children's as a certified coding specialist one, but it specifically states that it is a remote position. You will be doing some CPT and ICD-10 coding here. It states here that they want you to have an RHIA or an RHIT, but then up here it says CCS or CPC knowledge of medical terminology. I can't say I really quite understand this line, but if I had a CPC regardless, I'm going to apply for all of these positions anyway. That's what I did when I was searching for a job as a medical coder. I didn't do any of this, y'all. I just applied and just let them tell me no. So I suggest you do the same. But you must be a resident of Texas to work remotely. You can read over this on your own time because it's kind of similar to what we read for the other positions with Cook Children's. All right, you guys, we are almost done. It is also with Cook Children's as a certified coding specialist too. It doesn't state whether it's remote or not, but it does have the location of the actual building. And it's all pretty much the same. So we're going to skip over all of this. I'll let you all read that because it's similar to what we read earlier. ICD-10, CPT coding. So you'll be dealing with those code sets. But right here, this sticks out to me. You will primarily code complex ambulatory surgery and mixture of different types of E and M medical records. You will assist with coding outpatient ancillary clinic, specialty clinic, and emergency room record coding as necessary. And you will also be communicating with the physicians, most likely through some type of query process. They want you to have a CCS or a CPC knowledge of medical terminology. And then it lists RHIA, RHIT here. So if you have any of these certifications, you will be applying for this position. Okay, I wanna point out to you all that this one is also with Cook Children's as a certified coding specialist too, but it is a different position because the job code is different. This one is 104196. Let's go back to the one that we just left off of. 104199. So still apply for both, even though it says the same exact title. It says that it is located in the same building, but the department is different. It says ear, nose, throat clinic. Let's go back to the last one. It says craniofacial here. So these are in fact different positions. So here you will be dealing with ICD-10 and CPT coding. And the verbiage pretty much look like it's the same as we read earlier. So we won't be reading any of this. Same for education and experience. They want you to have a CCS, RHIA, CPC, or RHIT. Remember, the only way to guarantee a no is to never try. So go ahead and apply for those roles, even if you're a medical coding newbie. If you got questions or want to share your own job hunting experiences, drop them in the comments below. Let's build a supportive community and help each other succeed. Stay tuned for more job search tips, career insights, and success stories. Your dream job might be just an application away. Until next time, keep coding, keep applying, and keep chasing those career goals. Good luck on your journey, and I'll catch you in the next video.